The ancients believed that the more breaths you take, the shorter your life. There's a lot of truth to this because scientists will tell you that the more rapid you're breathing, the more anxiety and stress you have, the more sympathetic you are. They believe that if you breathe 15 breaths per minute, which is borderline anxious, that you will die around the age of 70 to 80. But if you can drop your breathing to 10 breaths per minute, which is not that challenging, you can live till about 100. So you can add 20, 20 years, 20 to 30 years to your life by breathing slower. Right now, we're going to do together three breaths per minute for one minute. So it's gonna look like this. You're gonna set that timer for five seconds. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Now, you can keep this pace up indefinitely if you're conscious of it. You see the breath is the thing, is the only thing that we have that we use unconsciously, but we can use consciously for normal people. Realistically, the breath also controls your heart rate. So you can have a lower heart rate consciously as well, which is essentially how we prolong life longevity by reducing the heart rate by improving and healing the nervous system by, in turn, improving all the other systems. All of your other systems work better. Your digestive system, your hormonal system, your, your cognitive systems, all of your systems, your detox systems, they work better when your nervous system is functioning better. And because all the other ones you can indirectly influence, the nervous system you can directly influence. It is the only thing that we have unconsciously and consciously. But we can bring it into our conscious awareness and essentially lower our breath rate through a myriad of exercises and improve all of the system. It has a cascading effect. It is the rising tide. There's a saying, the rising tide raises all ships. The breath the nervous system is the rising tide. Expand and... Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. 
Bene. You can prolong your life by improving the way that you interact with life and the way that you feel and the way that you think and the way that you move. And you can improve all of those things by first improving how you breathe. Because when you improve how you breathe, you take back conscious control of your nervous system. And when you take back conscious control of your nervous system, you take back your conscious choice on how you respond to life. Every response or reaction, every response or reaction plants a seed, whether it's a thought, a feeling, an action, a word, all of these things plant seeds. You reap what you sow. The karmic laws. All of those things plant seeds. And those seeds sprout and grow and have fruit that grow on them. So if your fruit that you're getting doesn't taste good in your life, if the results of your life aren't what you want, then you have to plant different seeds. It's very simple. And when you take back conscious control of how you respond to life, you start to plant better seeds. You start to weed your garden. Because you have a garden. This is a garden. And you create this next moment. We're constantly creating. So by listening to this video, by thinking about what I'm saying, by thinking about what you're thinking about what I'm saying, taking it to a couple layers back, you start to plant new seeds by taking these deep, conscious breaths. By learning how to consciously control your nervous system to either be relaxed or fired up or anything in between. You have to take back control of your breath. To take back control of your mind, you have to take back control of your breath. To take back control of your choices of what you eat and what you think, how you respond, how you move. You have to take back control of your nervous system and your breath. It starts with the breath, then it connects out into the movement, and the movement not of just the body, but of the mind, of the emotions, of the spirit, of how you interact with your environment of how you communicate, how you communicate to yourself, how you communicate to others. You can be anything that you want to be. You can turn your body into a weapon. You can turn your mind into a weapon. You can become more supple and relaxed. You can become full of energy again without the coffee, without the stimulants. You can create from a neutral space 
create this next moment with loved ones, with your business, with your body, with your emotions, with your mind, with your spirit, with your purpose. You can create this next moment with your conscious awareness, with your intention, with your presence, with your courage, with your love, with your kindness, with your integrity, with your alignment. And it's always a constant process, like you're constantly getting into that process. You're constantly shifting, creating, becoming, deleting, integrating. And you don't really delete, you rewrite. You rewrite. You could delete, but it's not necessary. It takes a lot more work. Still leaves a mark. <laughs> Just like getting rid of a tattoo. Leaves a mark. You don't need it. You can rewrite it. Recreate it. Relive it. Rebuild it. Respect it. Honor it. Honor yourself. Honor your journey. There's nothing that needs to be deleted. There is just perfection throughout this whole journey until we got to this moment and now it's a different layer or style or expression of your perfection and then the next moment will again be different learn to express express yourself like through your body your words your thoughts your emotions your writing learn to express all of that because you are all of that and there's a lot of magic there there's a lot of magic there but you you have to release everything that you're not in order to get to the layers of what you are a lot of the stuff that we've taken on isn't isn't us it's programming it's purely programming i read a patent recently i can link it to you guys there was a patent that was put out in 2001 it was accepted and grant were given for it in like 2004, I believe. Let's say 20 plus years of screens, right? Screens. Whether it's the phone, whether it's the tablet, and whether it's the TV are impacting your nervous system consciously. Like they understand how they're consciously impacting your nervous system with small frequencies that they're sending out very, very small frequencies that they're sending out that's impacting your nervous system, that's getting you to buy, to need to relax and soothe with the vaping and the smoking. It's constantly selling you stuff. And if you become aware of it, if you learn how to harmonize your nervous system, if you learn how to harmonize your environment, you can take back your sovereignty, your freedom, your control over yourself. You can get rid of the stress and anxiety. That's going to be the first thing that goes. Guaranteed, that's the first thing that goes. But there's more. There, there's deeper layers. There's deeper layers to the work. But we start with stress, anxiety, um, pain. Those are the things that will really like tune you in too much of a depleted frequency to be on all the time you're 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 just drained your battery gets drained so you have to learn how to turn off and then turn on at choice and not because the because your nervous system chooses because it's in a it's stuck in a sympathetic or fight or flight dominant state it's not necessary it's not necessary to live there i've been there I've experienced it for many, many years. I was a refugee of war. I had sexual trauma in my youth. Um, I've seen violent crime. I've got, been in fist fights. I've competed as a martial artist. I've been through school and college and bullying and university and wrapped dead bodies and seen dead bodies and delivered babies. So I have like all of these I guess, nervous system stimulating experiences that I was trapped in. And then I started to develop anxiety and depression at a higher level than I w what I could handle. Though I was anxious and potentially very stressed out my whole life, I just didn't realize it until I finally broke in my early 20s. 
So stress and anxiety is going to be the first thing to go. Then we stop running away from hell and we start moving towards heaven and we start going deeper into our purpose, our excitement. We start to develop other emotional states outside of anxiety, depression, and panic and stress and all of those negative states that we've grown accustomed to and we've needed soothing for. We don't really need the soothing anymore when we are soothed. We can soothe ourselves without without all that jerk, 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 right? It's, it's all the same shit. It's just like uh, a binky, like a soothing mechanism. There's nothing wrong with it. It just... It's, that's what we're programmed for because then we can be bigger, better consumers, easier to control. When we're better consumers, we're easier to control. When we're constantly living in a state of fear, we're easier to control. Easier to control. Your moves are predictable when you are in a state of fear. So when you are in a state of sympathetic dominance or fight or flight, you become like 50 IQ points dumber. At least. You just become dumb when you're stressed out, when you're scared. There's nothing wrong with that. I've been dumb before too. And I thought that was just like my way of being. But it wasn't. It was just because I was overreactive. I was overreactive. I was either uh, triggered and reactive externally or triggered and reactive internally, which essentially were part of the same cycle. So I was either beating other people up or beating myself up. And I beat myself up a lot worse than I would beat up other people. And I did pretty well in beating up other people, but I would beat myself up even worse. And it was just me, myself, and I being trapped in that sympathetic dominance. And that's essentially what I do now. Figure out how to get rid of stress and anxiety in your life without medication, without therapy, without surgery, or without any of the modern day bullshit that is presented to us. You deserve to feel good. You deserve to take back control of your life. You deserve to uh, find your purpose, live your purpose in this lifetime, not the next one, this one. That's why you're listening to this message. You deserve to, you get to remember who you are, like who you came here to be. Remember who the fuck you are. You're better than than you can imagine. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Have a beautiful rest of this moment. And carry it. Carry it with you. Like a backpack filled with water. And you're out in the desert. Carry it with you. Carry this memory with you of this deep breath together. And then exhale, nice and slow. With love and harmony.